Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Friday now, the 20th of October 2023. And we now have Hurricane Tammy out there east of the Lesser Antilles. Wait until I show you some of these radar animations that are coming out of there. Quite remarkable in real time to see what's happening as Tammy continues to get better organized. It is officially now a hurricane. Of course, we do have also officially Category 3 Hurricane Norma off the coast of Mexico. We're going to take a look at both of these. We're going to be tracking both of these this weekend. Busy, busy here as we get into the last third of the month of October. Glad you could tune in. Let's see what we've got. National Hurricane Center scrambling to update some stuff. 10 a.m. AST, so around um, just about an hour ago, it was officially noted that Tammy becomes a hurricane based on, if we click on this, NOAA and Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter data showed that Tammy had increased uh, its winds to 75, the air pressure 992. Now this is concerning right here to me. It's only moving at 7 miles per hour uh, off to the west-northwest. It's not moving very fast, so that means it's going to have time to really dump a lot of rain. Now that it's a hurricane, that gets a lot of headline attention, of course, but the slow movement, I believe, the slow movement of it, should be very, very much baked into the discussion here because it's not going to move in and out quickly. So as I'm going to show you on the radar, I've teased it already. Wait until you see it. Uh, very heavy rain coming in. I'm, I'm concerned for areas like especially Guadalupe that's got some mountain ranges in there as well as the other islands of the Eastern Caribbean. So yeah, Tammy a hurricane, and I'm waiting to see when they do update all of this other data in uh, their discussion, for example. It's not quite 11 a.m. Eastern time yet, so it's technically not due until 11 a.m. Eastern. So we will revisit this before I sign off. Let's keep moving forward in the meantime. Out here, out here if I can talk, in the Eastern Pacific, we do have Norma, still a Category 3. Some of that cloud cover is thicker cloud cover now, making its way towards Mexico. The good news is Norma will weaken. That is the official forecast. And it has come down off of its Category 4 intensity yesterday. We'll zoom in and take a better look at this in just a moment. Meanwhile, there's the wide shot of Tammy. Again, now a Category 1 hurricane. And then here is non-tropical related misery coming for our friends up in the Northeast yet again this weekend. If it was the, if it was February, we might be looking at a nice winter storm, but it's not. It's October 20th. Tomorrow's the 21st, right? So the weekend is going to be kind of miserable up there in New England and vicinity. Sorry about that. Looking at our interactive tracking map here, let's zoom in and see what's going on here with Norma first. Category 3 now moving its way up towards the Baja. It should miss in terms of the center passing over land. But you know what I'm going to say. You know it. It doesn't necessarily matter in terms of the overall impacts. It could still be pretty windy down there. And, of course, you could get some very heavy rainfall. This is going to be moving along not too fast, not too slow. You know, what is it, just right, I guess? So there is at least that. We're not going to have a scenario where it stalls. But it is going to be slowing down just a little bit before landfall. That's why some of these dots here, these plot points, are a little bit closer together. When they are further apart, then that indicates it's moving faster. So it does slow down, and usually these systems do slow down before they turn, because they're going along, they're going along, and then something impedes their progress, and then they go on and resume whatever motion they were doing, but they usually slow down first. So, yes, it looks like Norma could slow down some, and that could prolong those heavy rains, and so flooding could be a big concern for you folks heading down to the southern Baja with windy conditions, big waves, that kind of thing, all of it, right? Yeah, it's probably wedding season out there, just like it is elsewhere. October is a pretty popular month to get married. Probably is the case along the southern Baja. So be careful out there. Be mindful that there is a hurricane lurking not too far away. Now, speaking of lurking here in the Atlantic, let me refresh our track map. I know that it'll do so dynamically, but I just wanted to see if the Hurricane Center's information has been plugged into the system yet. And then our background data scraping that uh, Mr. Woodgate, the author of this map, created would pick that up. So the Hurricane Center must not have it out just yet. I keep refreshing this, and we shall see what we get here. 
Nope, not quite yet in terms of the discussion or the advisory. I want all this to be updated, and it hasn't just yet. And if this one right here doesn't get updated, these maps here, ours, anybody else's, those don't get updated. That's where the data comes from. Nevertheless, the track is generally towards the islands here, maybe through some of those islands, maybe just east, maybe just west. You never know for sure. We're going to look at the guidance from a couple of the models in just a minute. But I'm most concerned, especially with that 7 mile per hour motion, that areas like Dominica, but especially this west part of Guadalupe, that you could get some very heavy rain. Antigua over here, I've been there, been to that island last year. Um, you also could get very heavy rain as this moves through. Now the wind is a concern, yes, but the islands are typically built for wind because they're in the hurricane zone down here, right? But rain and water, there's just not much you can do. When you get cascading torrents of water, that can be very problematic. You've got Barbuda right here and uh, Antigua over here. Yeah, this could be a rather unpleasant weekend ahead. I'll be in touch with a few people that I know down there to see how things are going with them. And then I'm going to show you just a little bit of evidence to suggest that maybe, just maybe, we don't get this nice turn when Tammy clears the islands. Just a little bit of concern that the trough that's going to be digging offshore to turn everything out might not be enough. Might. I'll show you that in just a little bit. It's just a little bit of an interesting, something that's piqued my curiosity, let's just say that. A couple of tweets here I want to show you. Uh, this is from Steve, who is Steve. That's who Steve is. He's in the private sector. He picked up this radar animation. I wanted to show it to you. Um, it's about an hour old or something like that, roughly a little bit more than an hour. But yeah, out of Barbados, you can really see the organization that Tammy was uh, undergoing there. These bands feeding in, developing what looked like a uh, an eye. And then if we look over at the continuously updating, I'm going to refresh it myself. Uh, radar animation, this is a GIF from, GIF animation or GIF, however you say it, from uh, Brian McNulty. And clearly, you can all see just as well as I can, that it goes from, yeah, it's getting better organized, look at that, to really developing a well-defined small core right there. I mean, that's an eye. No doubt about it. Now, I want to say a couple things about that. These small systems are susceptible to ramping up very quick and coming down very quick. The environment that gave Tammy that organization needs to stay perfect, just like it is now. I don't know it's necessarily perfect, but if it changes even a little bit to the negative, that very small core, I mean, that core is smaller than some of those islands down there, right? It's not this big, sprawling, well-defined eye like we saw with Irma, for example, or Jose or Maria. Uh, Maria had a pretty small eye, but this is a very small core, and it's either going to really take advantage of this situation that gave it that life, so to speak, or it could fluctuate, and we see it dissipate, and it becomes broader over time. These just become harder to forecast when you have such tiny cores like this, but the main thing that I'm concerned with Yes, it's ramping up wind-wise, but all this precip in here, that's going to be generally moving into the direction of Dominica and Guadalupe and Antigua Barbuda eventually over the next 12 to 24 hours, and it is slow moving to the extent that it could become a real flash flood issue. More concerned with that than I am the wind. Again, people down there, they can handle the wind. It's that torrents of water that really is the problem. Here it is on uh, high-res satellite, visible satellite. Definitely has become better organized. A very small eye tucked right in there. And then here are our islands over here that I'm concerned with the most as this tr uh, chugs into that direction. Uh, really concerned with that, especially because of the flash flooding. We've seen it in recent years, right? All the social media that comes out of these areas, we can see this stuff almost in real time now down here in the Caribbean islands. And then eventually on social media it trickles out and we get some devastating flooding. And that is a big, big concern. So what are some of the models showing? Well, this is the uh, GFS, let's use red here, from 6Z this morning. There is what is now Hurricane Tammy in the vicinity of the islands of the Caribbean. So let's just move this out through time. And you notice that the GFS keeps the center of Tammy 
comfortably away, I would say, in terms of direct wind impacts from all of the islands. It's more east than the official forecast track. Then the GFS sees these lowering heights right here. That's that trough coming in. Trough picks Tammy up and kicks it out. No problem at all. Well, that's fine, except the Euro and some of the ensemble members of the GFS and the Euro and the Canadian are not so confident in that happening. This is also the 6Z run. This is the European, the ECMWF, and it's more close to and through the islands a little bit, right? See, clearly right through there, going right over Antigua, very close to uh, Guadeloupe, and maybe Barbuda right there, and um, you know St. Bart's off to the left, Anguilla, Anguilla, however you say it, Anguilla, ah, tongue-tied today. But then, more importantly than my pronunciation, it looks like it tries to slow down there significantly at about 90 hours. And we're going to have to just watch what the 12Z shows. Because that trough energy, that's over here. It's like missing the bus. There's your bus. There's you. And if your name's Tammy, the Euro is suggesting that Tammy is going to miss the bus. And then you got this big old bubble of high pressure right here. So it's kind of stuck down here. High pressure over here. Something to watch as we progress through today with the next suite of models that will be coming out. Now, let's see if this is finally refreshed. And it has. My patience has been rewarded. Tammy expected to bring hurricane conditions to portions of the Leeward Islands late tonight and Saturday. Heavy rainfall and flooding likely over much of the Lesser Antilles. That is very, very important. I highlighted that a lot. It's good to see. I mean, obviously, it's going to be baked into what they are saying. Key messages here. That is showing up. This is from 5 a.m., so that hasn't updated. Let's just check our track map one more time. And it has gotten the data. It doesn't have the cone information yet. That's not a problem. The cone is not that helpful, in my opinion, anyway. What is important is where does this look like it's going to track. And the official 11 a.m. track, a little bit closer to the GFS solution, as it just nicks the center of uh, Barbuda right there, just east of Guadalupe. But before I sign off and wrap this up and get it online, please remember, as you look at that line, you look at the National Hurricane Center, you might have an app that you use down there, whatever the case may be, that is the center, that very tiny little, in fact, I'll just go show you again, it's, uh, it's that little thing right there at the end of this loop. The track points are, wait for it, that right there. Very, very small. All the rest of that is Tammy. Please, please, please remember that. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to be moving through the area, not just a little dot on a map. So you say, oh, man, it just goes to the east of Guadalupe, so it should be okay. Well, wind-wise, but all that rain could wrap around, certainly Barbuda, Antigua, uh, you know, I just can't emphasize that enough. I've seen it enough times that I harp on it. Because in the end, uh, I want to keep you safe, keep you aware of what to expect. All right, so Hurricane Tammy, Hurricane Norma, keeping us busy this weekend. I'll be on top of it, and I'll let you know what's happening. I'll have an update tomorrow morning, and then we'll see what happens, too. Does the plot thicken post-Caribbean, and Tammy stays around longer? Is the Euro chart starting to sort of show a pattern change? We'll have to see about that as well. So nothing's ever easy, is it? Nope, it is not. All right, that's it for me. Let me get this online for you. As always, thanks for tuning in from all of us here at Hurricane Track. We appreciate you tuning in. I know I do. I'm Mark Suttoth. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you throughout the weekend with uh, concerning both of these systems.